With the emergence of a blue economy and a shift in focus to marine renewable energy, wave energy converters are a sustainable concept. They harness the power of our oceans and water bodies, converting this energy into usable forms. The foundation behind energy converters is the transformation of translational or rotational motion within the power generating components to electrical energy. The basic structure consists of the captive body or the hydrodynamic subsystem that absorbs the incoming wave spectrum, the power takeoff system that converts this captured energy into electricity, the mooring and reaction mechanism that keeps the entire structure at the desired location, and the control subsystem that handles data acquisition and makes real-time decisions for the device. These components interact and work together to generate electricity from wave energy. It is important to model the behavior and interactions accurately. By doing so, Devices can be fine-tuned to operate in an efficient, safe, and reliable manner. If you've ever looked at a floating buoy, you will notice its motions appear random and chaotic. But by modeling the forces and loads acting on it, we can begin to make sense of this randomness. One such formulation that models floating bodies is the Cummins equation developed in 1962. It decomposes this chaotic motion into a form that engineers are familiar with, equating the external and internal forces acting on the system. Let us break these components down briefly. Most waves are known as surface wind waves because they are generated by the action of wind forces. Over time and space, Waves with different properties arise because of variable wind speeds, relative density of the fluid, temperature, and other factors. These superimpose to create sea spectrums that appear random. With a given wave spectrum, the excitation force can be determined by performing a convolution integral with the excitation impulse response function. A convolution integral is a mathematical operation that identifies how a continuous function would modify the shape of another continuous function. It is used in different engineering disciplines to study the long-term effects of different variables acting on a function of interest. A visual representation of a simple convolution integral is shown here. When you have two functions, the convolution is performed by identifying a kernel function that acts on the main function this kernel is horizontally mirrored and then given an x-axis offset from the origin. This offset continually changes with time, making it appear as if the kernel slides along the x-axis. The area bound between the kernel and main function is plotted, yielding the convolution integral. In our case, we are interested in how the impulse response functions alter the wave spectrum and generate the excitation force. The hydrostatic force acting on a wave device is easier to model. It arises from the static pressure acting on the wetted surface area of the device. The submerged area is known from the geometry of the structure, while the hydrostatic pressure is computed from the following equations on the screen. By integrating the pressure across the area, the hydrostatic force can be computed. The term that really poses a challenge is modeling the radiation force. Radiation loads are generated by the motion of the body that changes the momentum of the fluid. Picture a stone bobbing in the water. The bobbing motion creates ripples that propagate outwards. We assume that the radiation dies out at distances far from the body. But the challenge lies in the fact that radiation is often causal. The term causal in this context means that the action of a force is determined by parameters from both the past and the present. The causality of the radiation force means that it is dependent on the velocity of the device, but not just the instantaneous velocity. 
The convolution integral that we saw in the case of wave excitation forces appears again because of this causality. The challenge is that the velocity is not available ahead of time. It is generated at every instant of time from the Cummins equation and from the radiation equation shown here. While this is easy to visualize, it is difficult to often simulate this in software because of computational and time constraints. The focus of this video will feature how we solved the radiation problem symbolically and how the results match up against standard reference software. In an earlier video, we went over Modelica, MapleSim, and the benefits of symbolic processing. An existing library is there for an ocean engineering toolbox in Modelica, developed by researchers at the Norway Institute of Science and Technology. While it builds a case for having symbolic libraries for simulating wave energy devices, it simplifies many of the concepts from Cummins' equation. Much of the physics is linearized, which works only in ideal scenarios. On the other hand, you have seen how complex the forces are involving impulse, impulse response functions, causality, and convolution integrals. Furthermore, research at Oregon State University has indicated that simplifying the radiation force by assuming it to be frequency independent can result in gross inaccuracies in the final results. Thus, this reference library is not suited to simulate actual wave energy converters. Expanding on this, there does not yet appear to be another symbolic ocean engineering library capable of simulating wave devices using the full formulation of Cummins equation that includes convolution integrals. This is what our research here at this model focuses on. Using applications of control theory and the core mathematics behind convolutions, we have successfully developed a foundational Modelica library for MapleSim capable of simulating wave energy converters. Our approach implements the convolution integrals in an efficient symbolic method, and the results match up against VEXSIM, a standard industry software used to study the hydrodynamics of marine structures. Let me take you on a walkthrough of the intended structure of this library. To know more about developing your own custom library or MapleSim component, you can check out our video linked in the top right corner of the screen or head on over to our channel. A new user would import the Wave Energy Converter Hydrodynamics Library into MapleSim using the GUI. They would then import a data structure containing the hydrodynamic data of the Wave device and details of the excitation forces. The import component then parses this data to a format that Modelica can process and computes the excitation force. To model the wave energy converter, the user imports a CAD file containing the geometry and relations between different devices. This is used to build up the Cummins equation for the system. By setting up simulation parameters, the user has control of the entire process. You can even import a reference dataset to validate results against the library's calculations. The advantage with this approach is that this library can input data from commercial boundary element method solvers that determine the hydrodynamic parameters of a device. This core simulation cap capability drastically improves the performance of our library by integrating the best features of different software. This is possible in MapleSim because of the functional mockup interface that allows different software to communicate and exchange data. Let us see the library in action. This example showcases the key functionalities of this library. We begin by assembling the various components into the MapleSim workspace. This example looks at a floating hollow cylinder, part of Sandia's reference model 3. The reference structure has been saved in an external file and the import component looks to retrieve and parse this data. Once parsed, it connects to the plant model component where it then transfers this data and the excitation loads. 
The geometry has already been fed into the component and the components start to assemble Cummins equation. By connecting probes to the required components, different output characteristics of the wave energy devices can be recorded. Since our interest lies in accurately determining the radiation force computed using a convolution integral, that is our first output. To study the motion of the device, we also output the velocity for the user to see. Running the simulation takes a matter of seconds, and to validate our results, we have a reference data set from Vexim. It is apparent that the radiation force the using convolution representation closely matches results from a standard reference software. The plot to the right-hand side represents the radiation force, while the plot to the left-hand side represents the velocity of the plant. Furthermore, the performance of this toolbox can be vastly increased using core simulation. MapleSim's CAD toolbox is an efficient solution to import complex CAD geometries and generate the governing multibody equations. If compared to the reference library developed at NTNU, you will notice a marked difference in the results. This is in line with our reference research on frequency-dependent radiation forces. Both the radiation force and plant velocity show a marked difference between our results and the reference Open Modelica library. The Modelica Ocean Engineering Library for Mapleson pioneers a symbolic representation of Cummins equation with the potential to speed up simulations without sacrificing accuracy. It takes on added importance in the light of real-time simulations to improve the performance of wave energy converters. As we continue developing this toolbox and take the idea further, we aim to harness the energy in our oceans in an efficient manner by bringing clarity to complex systems. To know more about Sysmodel's cutting-edge research in the field of renewable wave energy, do check out our channel. Thank you for watching.